If you are having trouble with your marriage, you are not alone. Every couple has its ups and downs, some more so than others. These problems could range from simple misunderstandings to larger concerns. Many issues of marriage are due to personal problems that one or both spouses may be going through, such as losing a parent. More traditional problems between the couple themselves, such as the couple losing touch with each other because they are too busy with children, jobs, and other responsibilities. And sometimes even outside influences, such as money problems due to a lost job. Many times in this modern and complex society, the problems with a person's marriage is a combination of all three types of problems. Moreover, marriages change over the years as both you and your spouse evolve. As the years go by, you both will go through your individual ups and downs as well, and these individual changes can affect your relationship with each other. These changes are normal and expected in any long-term relationship. Nevertheless, if you feel that the issues of your marriage are more serious than the regular ups and downs associated with a long-term relationship, do not despair. There is hope, even for the most dysfunctional of marriages. There are numerous solutions that may work for your marriage, including therapy, setting time aside, time aside for each other and yourselves as individuals, and even simply taking up hobby. Many marriages have been saved with combinations of the solutions that will be discussed here. Saving your marriage is not just about ensuring that you and your spouse get along well with each other. It is also about taking care of yourselves as individuals as well. It is vital that you take care of and nurture yourselves as well. For this reason, many couples find that participating in both couples therapy as well as individual therapy is the best route to working through their marital problems. There are numerous keys to a good relationship. These keys include fostering honest and clear communication between you and your spouse, being open and understanding with your spouse, thinking before speaking, and always make time for each other and yourselves. The solutions discussed here will enable you to start implementing these keys in your marriage and will help to set your marriage back on the right track. The most important step you can take to save your marriage is to have hope, have a positive attitude, and know that your marriage will be okay. Once you have this positive outlook, every other problem you and your spouse will have to surmount will seem a lot smaller than it did before. There are numerous reasons for a marriage between two people to become rocky, even the marriage between two people who are still very much in love. This is because relationships are not just based on interactions between the two people involved, but instead are almost like living and breathing entities of their own that interact with the people and environment around them. For example, though you and your husband may love each other with all your hearts, the fact that your mother despises your husband will strain your relationship, especially if you are close with your mother. No matter what kinds of metaphorical barriers you and your spouse put around yourself in your personal relationship with one another, your relationship will be affected by the outside world. This may be in the form of money problems due to a lost job, less time spent together because of other responsibilities, and many others as well. Individual problems may affect your marriage as well. If you are depressed because of the loss of a loved one or any other reason, for example, your relationship with your spouse will be affected by this. If you do not have time for yourself, you will not be able to make time for your spouse either. Besides the outside influences, there are also the more traditional problems that occur between couples as well. These include stress put on the marriage because of children, loss of communication because you have fallen into a routine and have stopped working at your marriage, and many others. Though these traditional couple problems are usually the final straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, and makes you two realize that there is in fact a problem between you, these are usually caused by underlying problems like those discussed above. For example, if you and your spouse are no longer communicating or spending time together, there will be an underlying cause for that. Perhaps one of you is suffering from depression and no longer wants to speak to anyone about your feelings, let alone your spouse. Or perhaps one of you is worried about losing your job and is now working extra long hours to ensure your job security and no longer has time to spend with the other. Though you may feel that your relationship's problems are fully unique to you and your spouse, you will be surprised to find the commonalities between your personal relationship issues and those discussed here. Regardless of the uniqueness of your issues, 
they will be able to be boiled down to one or many of, or a combination of, the various three types of problems that result in a rocky marriage. Outside influences, individual problems, and the most traditional couple's problems. There are numerous individual problems that can cause issues in your relationship to your spouse. These problems can come in many forms. The most common of individual problems that result in issues in one's marriage usually have to do with emotions and feelings. Many times a spouse will become depressed and will stop communicating to the other spouse, resulting in marriage issue, even though the reason for that person becoming depressed has nothing to do with the other person. Many times these emotional individual problems have something to do with one's self-esteem. When one's self-esteem gets low enough, they will start relating differently to those around them and cause rifts between themselves and their loved ones. Usually these emotional individual problems that affect one's self-esteem have something to do with how one feels about one's appearance. Many times, for example, women will begin to have low self-esteem regarding their looks and weight, especially if they just recently had children. In fact, most often these emotional individual problems affect women more than men, simply because women are more sensitive to their emotions. There are individual problems that will affect men more than women, however. For instance, believe it or not, men are actually more prone to depression resulting from lack of work or other employment. This is because men see themselves as the providers in the family, and when they are unable to provide for their families, they feel that they are not living up to their potential and will become depressed. Oftentimes, this depression is a worsening cycle because the worse the man feels about not providing, the even less likely it is that he will be able to find a good job and stick with it. What makes a man's individual depression even worse is that he will usually not open up to his wife or anyone else about how he is feeling, which results in him feeling even lonelier and depressed. There are many other causes of individual depression and other individual problems. Some of these causes include the loss of a family member or other loved one, the loss of a child, and even the loss of an animal. All of these losses will affect the relationship between a husband and wife, especially the loss of one of their children. Thus, the best solution to these types of individual problems that result in marriage problems is to communicate with each other. Tell your spouse how you are feeling before it becomes a problem to you and eventually to your spouse. This is often very difficult for people to do because they have always been taught to keep their feelings to themselves. For this reason, many couples will go to therapy to learn simply how to let the other one in so that they can prevent their individual problems from affecting their marriage. There are also the more traditional couple problems that affect a marriage. Usually these couple problems are based on one of four underlying issues, communication, children, money, and the physical portion of the marriage. Communication, or rather lack thereof, is one of the biggest underlying issues for most marital problems. The most common reason for problems with communication between a husband and wife is that men and women communicate differently. Men will often only tell their wives the basic gist of a situation until their wives nag them for the rest of the information. Women, on the other hand, will tell their husbands even nitty gritty detail of a situation and their husbands will not pay attention to anything they say after a few sentences. Because of this difference in communication styles, there is often a communication breakdown that results in relationships between men and women. Children and the parenting of said children are also one of the biggest Deutschstamm, biggest underlying issues for most marital problems. This is because many times men and women will have very different parenting styles. And if the husband and wife do not agree to a set of rules and regulations on how to raise and govern their children, each will end up stepping on the other's toes during the parenting process at one point or another. Even worse, older children will often try to take advantage of this disparity between their parents' parenting styles and will try to play their parents off each other in order to get what they want, which only stresses the tenuous relationship between their parents even more. Money is also a big cause for marital issues between husbands and wives. Though the reason a couple may be experiencing money problems may be due to an outside influence. Many times, husbands and wives differ on their money management and skills and techniques. Thus, like raising children, if the couple does not speak to each other about how they want to save, invest, and spend their money, they will eventually end up in a fight over what one person did with their money. 
Thus, it is often a very good idea for a young couple to sit down and discuss what their money techniques are and to agree together on what their money-saving goals should be. Finally, the physical relationship of a couple's marriage can end up causing very difficult problems in the relationship between the two people. As a couple's lives get busier with children, work, and other responsibilities, many times a couple will forget to make time for each other. Individual depression and other problems can also result in one of the members of the marriage to not be interested in the physical relationship for a while as well. These kinds of problems and lack of interest can often result in one member of the marriage to have an affair, which often breaks up marriages. Finally, there are also outside influences that can affect the marriage between a husband and wife. These outside influences come in a variety of shapes and sizes, from employment issues, to extended family issues, to even other people issues. Employment outside influences are some of the most common issues that result in problems between a husband and wife. This can result in a lot of tension between the couple, especially if the couple begins to have trouble paying bills and making ends meet. When a spouse loses their job, it not only affects the amount of income that the entire family earns, but also affects the spouse's self-esteem that lost the job. Thus, not only is the couple experiencing money issues, but at least one member of the couple has also experienced a personal and individual depression problem as well. In today's trying economy, employment outside influences are one of the most common reasons for marital problems. Extended family issues are another reason for problems in a relationship between a husband and wife. This is especially true if certain members of the extended family do not like one of the spouses. For instance, a mother-in-law and son-in-law, because these extended family members can be very important and influential to the spouse they are related to, such as the wife and her mother, the spouse can also be affected by how their extended family feels and thinks. Thus, a wife can be influenced by her mother's opinion of her husband. Moreover, if a spouse lose a loved one in his or her extended family that is very important to him or her, he or she may develop individual depression problems as well that constrain the marriage even more. There are also other people issues that can affect a marriage as well. For instance, if your husband's boss is continuously making him work long hours that results in you not seeing your husband as much as you would like to, it is actually your husband's fault that is causing the problem. The people that spouses may have affairs with also fall under this category, especially if they continue to interfere in the relationship between a husband and wife even after the affair is supposedly over. Regardless of these outside influences, these will not usually be the final issue that opens the eyes of the husband and wife and causes them to realize that there is a problem. Instead, these outside influences are often the cause of individual problems, such as depression, that then eventually lead to couple problems, which are usually the final problem that causes most couples to seek help or possibly divorce. If watching the last few videos has depressed you, do not despair because just as the before described problems are very common, so are the solutions to your marital problems as well. And when followed properly and with as much effort as you can muster, these solutions will have the best probability of saving your marriage. The most important solution to any marital problems is therapy, both individual and couples, because most marital problems are combinations of both individual and couples problems even outside influences result in one of the two other types of problems. It is recommended that you participate in both individual and couples therapy. Individual therapy will help you to process any individual problems that you are going through and couples therapy will help you and your spouse learn to communicate to each other about your individual problems, as well as the other causes of couples problems, such as how to raise your children. Because communication is the key to happy and successful marriage. Learning to communicate in a healthy and understandable way is the first step in rebuilding the relationship between your spouse and yourself. There are also more unique individual solutions that each spouse should seriously look into and at least choose to try one for their individual problems. The most important one of these solutions is to make time for yourself. As lives and marriages get busier, we often forget to take time out and rejuvenate ourselves. When we forget to do this, we end up feeling very depressed and useless without our significant others around. Taking time out for yourself will help you to remember who you are and your personal goals. 
The other individual solutions are truly ways that you can make and take time for yourself, such as taking up a hobby, continuing your education, and volunteering. Another really important individual solution is exercise. Not only does taking personal time to exercise give you time to yourself, but it will also improve your health and sense of well-being overall. There are also couples solutions as well. For the most part, these couples solutions are extensions of the individual solutions because making time for each other is the most important step in solving your couple's problems after learning to properly communicate. Thus, you can take up a hobby together, take a class together, volunteer together, and even exercise together. Nevertheless, though these solutions are similar to the individual solutions, it is still vital that you do at least one individual solution on your own. Many recommend choosing one from each of the categories. For instance, perhaps your spouse is not interested in continuing his or her education, so you can do that one on your own, but he or she is interested in starting an exercise regimen, so you can do that together. That way you will have something that is solely yours alone and something that is yours as a couple. Because honest and clear communication is the key to any successful relationship, therapy is the key to fixing any marital problems you may be experiencing. Therapy, in which you as an individual or you and your spouse go and speak to a professional about your marital problems, is a great way to get an outsider's opinion of the problems in your marriage. Oftentimes, a professional will help you both learn how to not only communicate your feelings more openly and honest to each other, but will also help you learn how to listen to the other's feelings as well. Because most marital problems are a result of a combination of both individual and couples problems, most professional therapists, especially marriage counselors, recommend a combination of both individual and couples therapy. This will help the therapist get to know both of you as individuals and, and as a couple, which will enable the therapist to give you and your spouse the best advice possible to help save your marriage. In individual therapy, the therapist will help it all by get our, help each member of the marriage explore what may be causing how he or she feels. The therapist will help each spouse learn how to personally deal with the feelings and issues that he or she is experiencing and will also help the individual learn how to properly communicate his or her feelings to his or her spouse and others as well. Therapists will often explore the couple's problems in individual therapy as well helping each spouse see the parts they play in the couple's problems and helping them find other solutions for them. In couples therapy, the therapist will help the couple explore what may be causing the couple's overall problems and help the couple get over the problems. Oftentimes, the latter can be achieved simply by the couple talking about their problems rationally and calmly. The therapist will also help each spouse share the individual problems they discussed in individual therapy with their spouse in couples therapy as well which will help the couple grow in their love and understanding of each other. Though therapy may seem expensive, especially with each spouse participating in individual therapy and then the couple participating in couples therapy, the solutions therapy will help you achieve in your marriage is worth the expense. Moreover, many times the couple will soon realize that they have dealt with their individual problems and will drop the individual therapy after a few sessions, greatly reducing the total cost of their therapy. However, these few sessions of individual therapy are often vital for a couple to succeed in couples therapy. Thus, do not discount the value of individual therapy because of the price. Individual therapy. Individual therapy is usually very important in the first stages of resolving your marital problems and saving your marriage. Many times the underlying causes of marital problems are actually individual problems. For this reason, most times both spouses will participate in at least a few sessions of individual therapy in order to help them fully grasp and understand their marital problems and the roles they played in them on an individual level. For instance, if an underlying cause of the couple's problem of not spending time together is because one of the spouses is very depressed, this spouse would need to discuss their depression and the cause of it with their therapist during individual sessions at first. Once the spouse has fully begun to understand the underlying cause of his or her depression and perhaps even begun to implement some solutions to resolve it, then he or she can share it with his or her spouse in couples therapy so that they can talk about it. Individual therapy is vital to couples therapy because oftentimes couples do not communicate well. 
This is usually due to each spouse being wary of fully opening up to the other, which results in miscommunication or even, in some very extreme cases, lack of communication at all. Thus, in order for the couple to communicate with each other, each spouse must first fully understand their feelings and problems themselves, and then they will be able to learn how to be comfortable enough to share their feelings and problems with their spouse. Many times, spouses do not even know how to communicate, even if they want to. For instance, even though a husband may be aware that he is depressed because he lost his job and knows that he should share that with his wife, he is not sure how to take the first step to open the line of communication with her. Perhaps he is scared that she may judge him. Or perhaps he is unsure exactly how to phrase his feelings without causing her pain and hurt feelings. So instead, he keeps it to himself. A therapist can help such a husband or wife learn the proper steps to communication. The therapist will be able to teach him or her exactly how he or she can be completely open with his or her spouse in a manner that will make him or her feel safe and accepted while doing so. The therapist will also be able to show him or her how to express his or her feelings without hurting his or her spouse's feelings. Moreover, later in couples therapy, the therapist will help each spouse realize that the other accepts them for who they are and will not judge them. As seen in just about every American movie that features a couple's marriage problems, couples therapy is the most common solution sought to solve a couple's marital problems. Regardless of how it is portrayed in the movie industry, couples therapy is still one of the most Vita aspects in solving marital problems that exist today. It is also one of the most successful solutions as well. Couples therapy gives couples a place where they can talk about their marital problems with a neutral third party, the therapist. This third party aspect helps to keep the couple's discussion of their problems a civil conversation instead of a screaming match that often occurs when couples in marital crisis try to discuss their problems alone. A therapist will be able to stop each spouse when he or she begins to express him or herself in an angry and non-understanding manner. Moreover, a therapist will be able to teach the couple the steps to honest and open communication and allow the couple to practice these steps in front of the therapist. Learning these steps to honest and open communication is vital to maintaining marital bliss. In fact, most therapists recommend that newlywed couples or even just engaged couples participate in a few marriage counseling sessions to learn these steps to honest and open communication before any marital problems arise. It has been shown that those couples that have participated in these types of premarital problem sessions are much less likely to have major marital problems during their actual marriage. One of the most important steps in honest and open communication is trust. Each spouse must trust that the other has his or her best interest at heart and will not judge him or her when he or she shares his or her feelings. For instance, a husband will not be willing to open up and show how vulnerable he is feeling if he believes his wife will judge him for being vulnerable. A therapist helps to build this trust between the couple and helps them learn that each member of the couple only has the best interests of the other member at heart. Another very important aspect of and skill necessary for honest and open communication is learning how to express oneself without hurting the other person's feelings. For instance, if a wife is worried because her husband lost his job, she must learn how to express this worry without causing the husband to feel even worse about the fact that he lost his job. A therapist can help each member of the couple learn how to better communicate his or her feelings without hurting the feelings of the other. Because individual problems are usually at least one of the underlying causes of marital issues, it is important for each spouse to take the time to solve their individual problems as well. One important step in solving these problems is individual therapy, which is already discussed. However, there are still a number of other individual solutions that each spouse should look into and seriously consider taking up at least one of them. These include making time for yourself and then a number of ways that you can actually make time for yourself, such as taking up a personal hobby, continuing your education, volunteering, and exercising. Making time for yourself in one of the above mentioned forms or in any other way that you can fathom is vital to solving your individual problems and preventing further individual problems. This is because often each spouse, at least to a certain extent, will lose some of his or her individuality when he or she gets married. For instance, 
A wife may stop spending time with her personal friends alone. She may only see them when she is with her husband as well. This removes the feeling that these are her personal friends and removes the individuality of this concept. When this is taken to the extreme, a spouse may plan every portion of his or her day around his or her spouse's schedule, which results in the, the first spouse having no individual life. This will eventually lead to resentment and discontent for both spouses. For this reason, many couples therapists recommend that couples denote one day a week for personal time, such as a boy's night and a girl's night. Therapists often recommend that the couple makes their days the same so that there is no resentment on either spouse's part when the other is out with his or her personal friends. Many couples therapists also recommend that each spouse takes at least one small mini vacation alone at least once or twice a year. The mini vacation can be with friends, family members, or simply by yourself, but your spouse cannot go. Mini vacations of a day or two will help you fully rejuvenate from any regular stress from your marriage, help you maintain you personal individuality, and help you to appreciate your spouse even more than you already do. Spending time away from one's spouse is also the only way to truly realize how much one's spouse means to one. The adage, absence makes the heart grow fonder, is really true in this sense. When you spend time away from your husband or wife, you will appreciate the time you spend with your husband and wife that much more. As mentioned previously, making time for yourself is the only real solution for any and all individual problems you may be experiencing that are resulting in marital problems. In fact, all other individual solutions are extensions of making time for yourself. There are numerous ways for you to make time for yourself, including taking up a hobby, taking a class or two, volunteering somewhere, and even exercising. However, the most important thing is that you actually make time for yourself. If you take up a hobby, but never take the time to practice or devote to it, then you are not helping yourself. Thus, the most important aspect of making time for yourself is actually making time for yourself. Oftentimes, people find making time for themselves incredibly difficult. In today's modern world, we are constantly bombarded with new and more stressful responsibilities and challenges. We are constantly on the move and constantly on call, and it seems impossible to find even a moment to oneself, let alone enough time to actually take a class or volunteer somewhere. Nevertheless, making time for yourself is the only way to not only save your marriage, but also your health and personal mental well-being. If you continue to run yourself ragged, you will end up exhausting yourself and your spouse both mentally and physically. Thus, make time for yourself. How? The easiest way for most busy individuals is to take baby steps. Take 30 minutes every other day or every few days to read a bit of a fun and entertaining book. Or perhaps allow yourself 30 minutes to meditate if you are so inclined. Basically, give yourself 30 minutes to do whatever you want. Alone. Sounds easy enough, right? However, most busy individuals will usually schedule their 30 minute break a few days from now and either forget completely about the date when the day and time comes or have something too urgent to do instead. To overcome this obstacle, physically schedule your 30 minute break. Put it in your calendar on your PDA, your email program, or whatever other technology you may use to schedule your life and set a reminder on it to remind you 10 minutes beforehand. If you are an on-call person, try to send out an email to everyone that may contact you to let them know that you will be out of reach for 30 minutes. And then, when the time comes, disconnect yourself. Turn off your phone, your computer monitor, and shut your door to the outside world. It is just 30 minutes. I promise you can do it. Once you have learned the trophy of these 30-minute breaks, you will find yourself scheduling them more often and then extending the time you spend in them. Before you know it, you will be taking yourself on many vacations without a care in the world. Taking up a hobby is an excellent way to make time for yourself. Many people enjoy taking up a hobby that takes them outside and allows them to enjoy the sunshine, such as photography, geocaching, and even painting or drawing landscapes. Still others enjoy taking up hobbies that get them out of the house, but still out of the outside, which they do not personally enjoy. These hobbies may include dancing, collecting antiques or other collectibles, quilting, and even writing. For fun, not profit. Whatever hobby you choose, make sure that you actually put the effort into learning the hobby 
and also making the time to practice and actually enjoy the benefits from the hobby. In order to learn about many of the hobbies mentioned and many of the others that exist, you may have to take a class or two. But community colleges offer very affordable classes on photography, painting, drawing, dance, and even writing. Usually these classes are only a few weeks long and are very enjoyable experiences. These classes should not be seen as a stressor or something that you have to do, but instead should be seen as the first step into practicing a hobby that you will thoroughly enjoy and be solely yours. Once you have learned all about your hobby, then you must actually make time to take advantage of your education and enjoy your actual hobby. For the busiest of people, it often easiest to schedule time to practice their hobby beforehand. Again, put the appointment in your PDA, Outlook calendar, or any other item or piece of technology that you use to manage your schedule, and then keep the appointment. Do not book another appointment you are supposed to practice your photography. Do not schedule a lunch date with someone when you are supposed to go to the park and sketch a landscape or two. Most people find it easiest to schedule their hobby practicing time on the weekends when work is not demanding, or at least less demanding, like it is during the rest of the week. However, many people find that once they have gotten used to practicing their hobby most weekends, that they do enjoy adding another additional day to practice it as well, or to do something regarding their hobby. For instance, many people who enjoy quilting may dedicate Saturday to a full day of quilting, but may take one night a week to go to a fabric store or to look up new patterns to try the following Saturday. Adding an hour or two dedicated to your hobby will help you remember the benefits of your hobby throughout the week and will cause you to look forward to the weekend even more. One of the best ways to take some time for yourself and improve your individual problems, especially if your individual problems are the result of low self-esteem, is to continue your education. Decide to go back for an undergraduate degree or perhaps even a graduate degree. Earning a degree or another degree will greatly boost your self-esteem and taking the time to earn the degree will improve your overall well-being. When you choose to continue your education, however, make sure that you do so slowly, especially if you have a family and a full-time job. You do not have to go back to school full-time. Instead, you can simply take one or possibly two classes a semester. It may take you five years to get your degree, but it will be a fulfilling and worthwhile experience instead of the stressful experience fitting in a bunch of classes while working full-time would be. In fact, there are actually many different degree programs that are geared to working individuals who have families as well. Many of these programs only offer weekend or night courses and help you to plan your entire course of study. These types of programs are recommended to most working adults with family responsibilities because the professors and administrators at these schools are much more understanding of the responsibilities each student has outside of the classes they are taking than regular professors at traditional schools who are used to teaching 18-year-old freshman students are. Remember that continuing your education is supposed to be a fun experience, so make sure to choose a program that you are actually interested in. However, to reap the best benefit from continuing your education, it is recommended that you not only choose a program that caters to your interests, but that you also choose a program that might actually benefit you in the employment world as well. Nevertheless, the most important aspect when choosing to continue your education as an individual solution for your marital and individual problems is to choose something that you enjoy. So, if you want to get a degree in painting, get a degree in painting. It is whatever makes you happy. If dedicating yourself to earning a degree does not sound appealing, just take a course or two that interests you, not one that moves toward any degree. Many people enjoy taking a simple history course or anthropology course, for instance, simply because the subject interests them. You should choose to audit the class, which allows you to listen and learn in the class, but does not require you to turn in any work or take any tests. This allows you to learn simply to learn. Maintaining and improving your health, if necessary, is a vital task that everyone should participate in. Nevertheless, maintaining and or improving your health is even more important when you are experiencing marital problems. This is because when you exercise, your body releases endorphins, which are a mood-elevating hormone. Thus, when you exercise, you actually feel better, even happy. This is why many therapists recommend taking a walk when you and your spouse get into an argument, or even if you are simply stressed, 
a five minute walk will do wonders for your mood. Moreover, taking a little time to cool off will help you and your spouse get over your argument much more quickly. When you choose exercise as your form of making time for yourself, it is again best for you to schedule your exercise time beforehand. To reap the best benefits of exercise, you should try to schedule your exercise at least twice a week. Taking just a 15 minute walk will do wonders for you if you do it a couple times a week. Many people enjoy practicing their exercise outside or at a gym where they get to take a break from the stress of their own homes. Most experts recommend exercising outside in the sunshine when possible because there are numerous health and mental benefits from soaking up some of the sun's rays. However, when you choose to exercise outside, make sure that you properly protect yourself from the sun's rays as well, including wearing sunscreen, sunglasses, and a hat or visor. The benefit of practicing your exercise outside your home may or may not be obvious to you. First, there may be a number of distractions in your own home, including children, phones, spouses, and even pets. If you are continuously interrupted during your exercise, you will not only not reap the health benefits of exercises, but will not gain the personal time you need either. Thus, if you can, plan your exercises, routines, and regimens outside of your home. If you must exercise at home, try to schedule your exercise routines for when no one else will be at home. Not only does exercise improve your health and gives you a great time to spend by yourself, but it will also improve your self-esteem. Besides improving your overall well-being because of the endorphins that exercising creates in your body, exercise will also improve your outward appearance. Looking and feeling good is one of the fastest ways to improve your self-esteem. This is especially true for women who are suffering from individual depression problems due to low self-esteem regarding their outward appearance and overall looks and weight. I, I don't, um.